praise the name of our God this morning. We certainly thank you, Lord, for another wonderful and beautiful day to seek your face, to hear what you say. We pray that you would bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for those that uh, prayed for and those that attended my daughter's uh, uh, stage play on this past weekend. It was a great success, and I thank you for it. We're going to talk today. uh, Let's get God's, let him fulfill his will fulfill our lives. Many Christians let their feelings control how they act instead of letting faith steer them. Seeing God's will fulfilled in your life means learning to obey him no matter how you feel. Trust God and follow his leading. He will never lead you to do something you can't do or something that isn't in your best interest. You can always do what God is asking you to do. You may lack the motivation, but you can do it if you really want to. This modern culture is always trying to shift the blame onto someone else or some exterior circumstance. Anything other than accepting responsibility themselves. To fulfill God's will, you have to accept responsibility for it in your life. You are a person created in the image of God. Therefore, you are responsible for your actions. God commanded believers in Philippians 4 and 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. God would be unjust to command you to rejoice in the Lord always if it wasn't possible. You don't have to feel joy to rejoice in the Lord because you always have joy in your spirit, whether you can feel it or not. Galatians 5 And 22 will tell you that that's one of the gifts of the Spirit. You can do what God tells you to do regardless of how you feel. Rejoicing is like putting a bucket down into a well of life in your spirit and drawing out the fullness of God. Emotions should be like the caboose on a train, going wherever the train goes but not determining anything. Uh, you might want to read uh, First Kings and, and 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 see where I'm going. I can't uh, do the whole thing, but in First Kings 17 and 1, it says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. He could have focused on the dangers to himself, but instead he was obedient to the Lord. He received a word from God and acted on it. Elijah became the most dominant man in the entire nation because he received direction from God and acted on it. Praise God. Immediately after Elijah prophesied the drought, God gave him further instruction. He said in 1 Kings 17, 3 through 5a, he said, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook of Cherith, that is, before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. You see, God gave Elijah a promise of protection. But notice, that the promise to provide for Elijah didn't come until after he obeyed his first instruction. This is why so many people don't fulfill God's will for their lives. God reveals his will, but people start trying to rationalize how everything is going to work out before they act on what he has told them to do. God sent Elijah's provision there, and where Elijah was, but where God told him to go. He, he, he sent his, his provisions there, not where Elijah was, but where he told him to go. Also notice that God had already uh, commanded the provision. 
Likewise, God doesn't send your provision to you. He sends your provision to where he told you to go. It's kind of like a, a similar to a quarterback. He throws the football to a receiver. He doesn't throw the ball to where the receiver is when the ball is leaving his hand. He throws it where the receiver is going to be. When the ball gets there, he throws the ball out in front of the receiver. Praise the name of our God. Amen. One reason you might not be seeing God's provision in your life is because you are too much here and not enough there. Many born-again, spirit-filled believers look at their lives and only see problems. They don't understand that they have the same power on the inside of them that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Read Ephesians 1, 18 through 20. God's power is an out in heaven someplace. It is on the inside of you. Praise the name of our God. God, uh, uh, instead of looking for a fresh word from God to fix your problem, act on the direction he's already given you in Scripture. Every time you hear a word from God but fail to obey it, your heart becomes hardened. Even though your heart becomes hardened, praise God, uh, uh, God will never, I said he'll never, amen, stop speaking to you. John 10 and 27 says, my sheep, they hear my voice. He said, I know them and they follow me. Praise the name of Jesus. Being obedient doesn't make God love you anymore. Failing to obey him doesn't make him love you less. But God can't lead and direct you into his blessings and fulfillment without your cooperation. God has given you everything you need to live a victorious life and, and see his will fulfilled in your life. In Second Peter 1, 3, and 4, the Bible says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things, that pertain unto life and godliness. Um, uh -huh. Through the knowledge of him that have called us to be glory and virtue. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, whereby are we given unto us uh, exceeding great and precious promises uh, that by these uh, ye might be partakers uh, of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You simply need to act on his word and his leading. I'm going to go where he tells me to go. I'm going to do what he tells me to do. And I'm going to say what he tells me to say. Oh, yes. we got to fulfill his purpose. We've got to fulfill his will in our lives. Yes. Now, God, our Savior, our soon-coming King, stretch out your hand this morning on all those that are under the sound of our voice. Give us the desire even the more to do your will. Have your way, dear God. Let us all proclaim, not my will, but thy will be done. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen and amen.